Hello class, this is section 3.3 and in this video we are going to discuss characteristic equations when the roots are complex. So first we have to state a fact. If a real polynomial, like our characteristic equation is always going to be, has a complex root E A plus B I wait on sorry. I mean R equals A plus B I. It must also have a root R equals A minus B I. I'm not going to go through the reasons for this algebra fact, but it is true. Whenever you have a real polynomial if you have a, a plus b i root, you must have an a minus b i root where i is equals to equal to the square root of one, minus one. And it turns out we can use this fact to write down general solutions in a better way. So first, let's uh, write down a very important fact about taking exponentials of complex numbers. So e a plus, sorry, let me rewrite that. If you use Taylor's theorem in calculus 2, we can calculate that e to the raised to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And this is called Euler's formula. Again, there's nothing too mysterious. You can find this in most of your calculus textbooks. It's also in our textbook. I'm not going to go through it, but you would just use Taylor expansion, the Taylor's theorem to expand it out and you get cosine and sine that way. And this means that E raised to the A plus B I is going to be E A times E I B, which is going to be E A cosine B plus I sine B. So let's consider, so we know that if our characteristic polynomial has a root a plus bi, it also has a root a minus bi. And that means that we are often concerned with expressions in this form in our general, general solution. So we have c1 erx, c2 er2x, like we always do, but this time the roots are complex. So with a little bit of algebra, using this formula, we can calculate that this is going to be C1 times EAX times EIBX plus C2 EAX times E minus IBX and this gets us C1 EAX cosine BX plus I sine BX plus C2 EAX cosine BX minus I sine BX. Though I should mention this. So we know that sine minus x equal to minus sine x. So if we have a minus sign here instead, it'll be a minus sign in the b, and the minus sign can just be taken out. So that's cosine b minus sine b, like the way we wrote, wrote it here. But this means that we can write this down as e a x times cosine bx times c1 plus c2 plus eax times sine bx times c1 minus c2 times i. So remember that c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. So we can just rewrite this 
in the form of c1 plus c2 is just another c1 tilde and c1 minus c2i is just another constant which we call c2 tilde and there you go so instead of writing c1 e a plus bix and c2 e a minus bix you can write it down as c1 e a x cosine bx and c2 e a x sine bx and this means that we have a principle for complex loops if the characteristic equation has a root r equals a plus bi it also has a root r equals a minus bi and the general solution of the differential equation contains the terms c1 eax cosine bx plus c2 eax sine bx and this is how we handle complex roots.